Periodically Productions presents Fairy Tales for Unwanted Children. The Small of Her Back by Scott Thrower. Many years ago, there was an older woman of stout heart and mind who would take weekly visits to her husband's grave to sit and chat and tend to the flowers that grew there. Someday she would lay out a blanket in the sunshine and nap, while others would find her huddled beneath an oiled cloak with her back to the stone and a bag of sandwiches clutched under her arm. But never once did she miss a Sunday. One day, just as she was brushing an errant leaf from her skirt and stretching her stiff back for the long walk home, the quiet fall afternoon was disturbed by three knocks. The woman steadied herself against her husband's stone and watched as her fingers grew pale and it took her a few moments to gain the courage to look about. The cemetery stretched out in each direction, with a tangle of monuments and stones, dark twisted trees and sagging brick fences, but she could spy no one who could have been the source of the knocking. In fact, it had sounded quite close, and there was nothing within reach that could have been wrapped to create an equivalent sound. For the first time in ten years, she hurried away from her husband's graveside, and she chose not to look about as she went, preferring to think that it was simply her poor eyesight that had failed her, and not wanting to entertain the thought that it could have been anything else at all. The next Sunday, she hesitated at the entrance to the cemetery. She had not wanted to come alone and had, in fact, asked her son to make the trip as well. Claiming her failing sight left her worried about making such a trip in the rainy weather, though no rain had fallen and the threatening clouds were already being pushed away to the south. But he refused to close the shop. Finally, as she worked up the courage and pushed through the metal gate, she heard the voices. And as she approached her husband's grave, she saw people gathered, sitting upon gravestones and blankets, leaning against each other or sitting off alone. Each time someone would raise their voice too much, the rest would shush them, and the group would return to whispers. The woman stopped on the path and watched these people, both young and old, and noticed that none sat upon her husband's stone and that no blanket was laid across his grass. She had just begun to take a step forward when the moment was broken by the demanding sound of three knocks that silenced everyone present. She held her breath until the crowd burst into excited whispers. People were rising and pointing, debating amongst themselves about the origin of the rapping, but the woman was unaware of it all. The sound had come from her husband's grave, and the woman had almost reached it when she noticed that many of the crowd were pointing there as well, at the large grey stone that bore his name. She fell to her knees and clutched the stone as the excited voices rose around her. They said many things, but she didn't hear them, because she was with her husband, seeing his face from ten years ago, hearing his laughter that filled the home, the nervous look he would get when he had an idea for her shop, and the way she'd wake to find his broad hand on the small of her back. She was still touching the stone amongst the clamor of the strangers, when the afternoon was again broken by the banging of three knocks. And this time the woman could feel the stone in her hands shake with each one. She fell away from it, smiling, with tears in her eyes as some strangers crowded in and many others ran quickly away. She spoke to him, telling her husband everything that had come and gone in the ten years that had passed. And she was still telling her stories as a woman pulled her aside and the first shovel bit into the ground. She laughed as they dug. Telling everyone present of the wondrous man they were about to meet, turning her face to the happy, the ones who cried with her, and looking away from the terrified who stood away with dark faces and muttered words. When the first shovel hit wood, she pulled away from her supporters, clinging to the edge of the pit as the last of the dirt was thrown out by a young man stripped to his shirt sleeves and stained with dirt and sweat. There was a smell, 
a rotting smell that caused people to reel away. And the young man in the grave turned to her with a pale, uncertain look as the wood of the coffin creaked underfoot. The stench caught in her throat, and for a moment she wavered, until three strong knocks sounded from below, and both she and the young man saw the last of the dirt dance upon the coffin's lid. She nodded slowly, hesitantly, with a handkerchief over her mouth and unbreathing, and the young man steeled himself before prying open the wooden box. His hair was the same. It curled in just the way it had the day he was lowered into the earth. But his skin was blackened and paper thin, pulled back from his teeth and sunken around the eyes. A white crust had formed around his cheeks and the pale sheets around him were stained a deep brown. There wasn't enough of him, the sturdy man she'd known so well. The young man clambered out of the grave and vomited on the path, and the woman stared down at the thing in the grave for quite some time before being pulled away. The afternoon stretched on as people tried to comfort her, and officials asked her their questions. And again she tried to tell them about her husband, about this man she knew. But every time she tried to speak of him, all she could do was conjure brown teeth and cracked black paper. She watched as the grave was refilled, and then began the long walk home, alone, clutching her bag of sandwiches that she'd never had the chance to eat. As she walked through the village, she stopped to watch her son through the shop window as he swept the floors and arranged the shelves. He'd done everything so differently since asking her to step down, but she'd never offered him advice because she remembered bristling when it was offered to her. She considered stopping in, but the smell of the grave was still with her, and the day had drained her of all she had left, so she simply turned for home. She sat at the kitchen table without removing her coat, staring into the darkened hall, the bag of sandwiches still clutched in her hands, the mantel clock ticking, the lingering smell of rot the uneven chair with one leg raised up upon the rug, the paper bag rough against her palms, the pale look upon the young man's face, the wind as it leaned against the side of the house, her head feeling light and ready to float away, despite the heaviness of her body the ache of her stiffening back. Brown teeth and cracked black paper. And then three knocks upon the door. After a moment, the older woman began to smile. She set the sandwiches in the bin beside the stove and sprinkled some water on the herbs in the window. She looked around the kitchen she'd known for so long before checking the clasps on her cloak and pulling up the hood. The last thing she did before leaving was to blow out the candles, plunging the house into darkness. Her muscles were sore from a long, strange day, but she no longer minded. He'd come back for her, so none of that mattered. The night was crisp as she opened the door and she could see nothing upon the porch, but she stepped out anyway and turned to lock the house, dropping the key through the mail slot for her son to find. She listened to the rustling wind, hoping to hear the voice she remembered so well, but there was nothing. So she called to him. She said his name like a statement, a certainty, her end and her beginning, and she stepped off the porch and into the crunch of leaves upon the path. A touch upon the small of her back made her smile. And she called out his name again, but still she could see nothing. It was just a touch upon her back, moving her forward into the night. The gentlest touch on the small of her back. 
too light and too small. Did you find a moral for this week's story? Let us know on Twitter at Periodically Pod, or join the Fairy Tales for Unwanted discussion group on Facebook. For more fairy tales for unwanted children, join us at unwantedchildren.ca.